All right, hello. So today I'm starting uh, something of an experiment. I've been trying to reach out to a lot of different people who disagree with me. And I've also been trying to understand the culture war in a new uh, way with a lot of different people. Today I have uh, David Sherratt here. Um, a controversial figure. Some people have advised me not to have conversations, but I decided that we should discuss a variety of things concerning the culture war and whether there is an ethical way to pursue conflicts inside of the culture war or pursue conflicts inside the war we currently have, largely concerning elements of global liberalism, global corporatism versus elements of nationalism. So um, well, I don't know if you want to introduce yourself. I just know you from Spinosaurus Kin. Uh, you've been doing a lot of other stuff, but to be quite honest, I've more or less stayed out of all the drama. Do you uh, want to give yourself an introduction? Uh, uh, okay. Um, I used to be a more sort of uh, anti-social justice kind of YouTuber, but a couple of years ago, I decided um, uh, that sort of uh, community was going in a direction I didn't like. Um, so I broke away from that and went in a more um, sort of openly progressive direction. Um, and so most of the time I'm spending, well, arguing with white nationalists. So when you say a progressive direction, what do you actually mean? Um, I, I mean uh, more openly in favor of uh, sort of left-wing politicians and um, arguing for things like uh, trans rights and arguing against uh, uh, the sort of uh, uh, growth of this reactionary nationalist uh, MAGA cult. I am both a reactionary. I don't, uh, well, I guess I consider myself sympathetic to reactionary ideas. I don't like calling myself a nationalist. Understandable. Because of its association with some early 20th century developments. But I think that organizing power through the nation state is the best option we have for organizing power because the alternative seems to be organizing it through multinational corporations. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, and, don't get me wrong. Oh, hold on, give me, hear me out. Oh, and sorry. Okay. I, I would definitely sympathize, although with not in all aspects, with contemporary governments, say in Poland and in Hungary. Um, I understand that Viktor Orban uh, has some things that are less than savory, but at the same time, I think that his alternative vision, his pushback against the EU vision, which again is what I see as corporate elites, is something that uh, is refreshing if not uh, uh, totally 100% worked out yet. Okay. I guess I'm just let listing. Uh, so obviously, perhaps we are in... So I guess you consider, is your progressivism more of a cultural variety, or is there are there critiques of like capitalism? Or are you a, like a communist or a socialist? Or? Uh, I, I wouldn't consider myself a communist or a socialist. I don't think any kind of revolution is going to happen. And in my opinion, I've uh, in the arguments I've had with socialists, most of them don't even know what they really want or what socialism will look like. So I'm not here to bank on um, any kind of uh, magical revolution that's going to solve all of the world's problems. I'm more of just a, a social democrat arguing for things like uh, a better taxation and, um, and, and things like uh, better welfare programs, stuff like that. I do agree that people who are nationalists tend to understand what nationalism is versus people who are socialists who tend to have a much more vague, abstract notion of what socialism is. I suppose what we're confronting is as a social democrat, you are more or less a person that is advocating for a very small change on top of the status quo. And as a social progressive, you are a person who has similar opinions to those who are currently those in power inside the corporate and government elite, uh, you know, a few nationalist I, leaders I here and there. I, I not, would, a few nationalist I, I wouldn't entirely agree standing. with that. I, I actually legitimately would not agree with that. I think a lot of the um, uh, sort of uh, quote unquote social progressivism you see from um, from sort of multinational corporations and stuff is is aesthetic at best. It's a selling point. It's um, it's a watered down version that's um often actually um 
way more sort of up in your face than the kind of politics that I uh, agree with. I see a lot of this. Um, well, I appreciate that, but that's sort of like, you know, that's just a matter of degree, regardless of the fact that it might be aesthetic or not as extreme as you would like it to be. It's undoubtedly to the left of where the majority of the populations these companies do business stand. Uh, yeah, I, I'd agree with that. So I just think that we have to recognize that this is sort of the reality we have here. So I guess this is just a little bit of an introduction. We did start early so that we could cover this to get some groundwork. Like I said, I'm not the person who's the most up on drama stuff, which I've seen David Schrott's name come up in connection with a bunch, but I'm, <laughs> just, you know, I have no idea why well, I don't have no idea, but, uh, I, it's not really my deal. I have noticed, though, that on Twitter, we've gotten in a number of fights, not fights, but disagreements. Arguments, I'd like disagreements. To say, yeah, yeah. There you go. About the proper way, what is a respectable thing to do in the culture war, given that we have these disagreements between reactionary and nationalist sympathies and social progressive and... I guess social democrat and socialist sympathies because I I, I know their socialism is vague, but these things oftentimes bleed together. Yeah, that's uh, true. That's and, true. And uh, given that, how are there things that are frank, frankly unethical to do inside the culture war, both online and in real life? Are there things that we, perhaps should even be made illegal? Are there things that, uh, if not illegal? We should have institutional rules to guard. And then from those who uh, that are not uh, institutionally guarded, are there things that people who are respectable, people who are interested in serious conversations about ideas and not mudslinging, are there things that we should avoid? Um, I'm just going to throw this. So I, I, before I let you go, and I'm going to give you an extended period of time, I'll give the context. I don't really exactly remember what our disagreement was, but I believe it came up in connection with the recent angry mob that came to Tucker Carlson's house. I believe it was on Thursday of last week, maybe Friday. And then uh, subsequently the fallout from a lot of mainstream respectable journalists kind of uh, being all ho-hum and, and, you know, shrugging their shoulders at it sort of, and the most notable one in, among them is Matthew Iglesias, who, when I remember him from the Bush administration, was the paragon of, of of rational debate and and respectable journalism for the millennial generation. Perhaps you could outline what you think the rules of engagement are for the culture war, and just take as long as you want to here. I want to understand the David Trott vision of ethical conversation and ethical dialectic on uh, both in real life and online. Um. Uh... Well, that's a massive topic. Uh, I could talk about that for hours, but uh, Just... I mean, in reference to the uh, the Tucker Carlson situation, there's um, there's two um, th there's two angles that I would take on it. The first one is um, my actual opinion on whether or not it should have happened and if it was a good idea. And I don't. I, 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 that was a it was a stupid thing to do. You don't go to people's houses and um, and chant at them. It, it's it's uh, a it's well, not exactly a good idea. legal thing to do. Yeah, yeah. It's it's not. I I, I wouldn't do that myself. I wouldn't endorse it. Um, so you could. Uh, I will say I disavow. Um, and then you have uh, the other direction, which is the political context around it and the discussion. Um, uh, so I um I, I think that there may or may not be some level of disproportionate focus around it. But my real issue is um is why there would be disproportionate focus around it. And that's because um, in the recent years, we've seen um, this sort of uh, quote unquote culture war um, basically uh, start to become much, much more virulent, right? Um, think uh, people getting fired um, from the jobs on both sides um, and well, reporters getting sent death threats and mail bombs and stuff like that. Um, and there's been terrorist attacks um, so at the end of the day, as much as I hate to say it, um, people, uh, a lot of people are really not going to care a huge amount about this one situation 
because of the fact that there is just so much going on. Um, well, has anyone has anyone have we seen anything like this? Has a major journalist had protesters show up at their house and basically chant how they want to fight him and how he should be afraid? Has that happened? It, like, when was the last time that happened? Like, my my guess is sometime in like the thirties. Ah. Uh... I mean, it's not something that necessarily happens to their house, um, but Detail. I mean, yeah. Um, but at the same time, journalists are getting uh, threatened and doxxed and harassed all the bloody time. Um, yeah, are you familiar with the recent um, situation with the Ralph Retour and the Wall Street Journal? Um, I understand. Yes. I mean, we'll we'll get to that. Um, but let's stick. Yeah. And I, I, I just I just wanted to use it as a counter example. I just wanted to use it as a counter example. Is that journalist there? Um, before she even wrote the article, um, her docs was all over the boards. Um, they were putting uh, they were mm -hmm. putting her phone number in. Um, and I have spoken to quite a few journalists who cover things like white nationalism. Um, most of them do get doxxed eventually. Um, they have to change phone numbers. Um, they have to change addresses. Um, they will have to, um, they're like, um, they are harassed in real life all the time. Yeah. It's Doxing. just that it's not as, um, it's not as uh, sort of public and, uh, and visible as this situation. Well, so there, there's a reason, right? Because doxing is one thing and I, doxing is terrible, but, um, you know, let's go, let's go forward here. And the reason why, if, if Tucker Carlson just got doxxed last week, no one would be talking about it today. The, what, what was unusual about this is that he, his docs was dropped. And then like within 12 hours, there were organizations that were go saying like, let's go to his house and yell threats at him. I mean, that was, uh, this is one of the groups, I forget the exact name, is it Smack? I, I, it's one of the Antifa groups in DC. Oh, one of those. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, but, I mean, the, the, I, I know we need to kind of, like, the reason why I'm having this conversation is that we need to get a handle on where the lines are here. Otherwise, it's always going to be like the other person did did this. and uh, that Yeah, I, I'm not saying, I'm saying the line was crossed. I'm, I'm not going to disagree with you on that one. Um, it's just at the moment we're seeing this escalation happening on both sides. And I don't think that, uh, I, I don't think just talking about this one issue and continually condemning it is really going to change anything. Well, no, uh, I, I, I think that large organizations that are considered somewhat respectable, like Antifa, uh, <laughs> they need to sit out of violence, right? I, I, I wouldn't know if they, uh, I, I wouldn't know if they'd be considered respectable by the mainstream. Um, a lot of people most... on the left are defending them. Yeah, they, they do. Um, uh, they do. Okay. But um, you would also agree that you, you did earlier say that the sort of um, uh, sort of well-known American political left is somewhat um, socially further left than the average population, right? Yeah, the, the corporate power is yeah. on the left. Yeah, like why and, and... should that matter ethically, though? I thought we no, were but my my, my point is that my point is power. that this is this is still somewhat um uh th this is still somewhat um uh in a small area of the internet um most lefties well, if you not. ask them oh, oh well most um most of the sort of larger left wing types did um did criticize that people like Stephen Colbert um so I I can't see um I I can't see how um, this is something that the entirety of the left has to actually um, take responsibility for. I, I mean, I'm like I said, I've already to can, take responsibility. Yeah. I'm asking to come out with a unified standard that people can understand. <laughs> well, the, like, the left is not going to have a unified standard. The left is uh, a, a lot of different groups with different opinions. Well, yeah, yes and no, but you're going to have a hard, if someone, if I, if someone comes out and says, uh, the N word on television, everyone on the left uniformly will condemn them. But if someone goes to Tucker Carlson's house and talks about how they're going to fight him and now she'd be terrified, you get like a 60, 40 split. You see, that's not, that's kind of bullshit, right? I mean, the left condemns things uniformly all the time. Sometimes things that are trivial and stupid, like saying the n-word inside quotation marks about how you shouldn't say the n-word you'll get like 99 uniform denunciations for that kind of thing 
Uh, yeah, well, I, I don't know exactly what you're asking for here, then, because okay, I'm asking. Um, I would, I, I would advise more violence leftists. at the same way you take, you know, racism. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I do criticize it. I'm, I'm not here. No, I, I'm, I'm asking yeah. for us to work together for that standard. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I, I've criticized it multiple times. I've spoken out against it as many times as I can. And at the moment, what I'm trying to do is lead by example. I'm, I'm trying to say, look, I do what nonviolent activism that I do um, online. And I'm trying to show that that is something that works, something that's effective and something that's way better to do than any kind of like uh, political violence. But uh, at the end of the day, there's a lot of people on... Um, on the left or on both sides or just um or, or just sort of like um outrage bait journalists um who are the, writing for some like tiny clickbait site who are gonna who are just gonna say yeah it's great that tucker carlson was uh harassed or something no, we're not, we're, 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 I, I gave a very specific example matthew matthew iglesias like um, it's it's not that's not uh, who is he not, I, I i'm not familiar he's, with him. he's one of the founders of vox and one of the most notable journalists of the bush administration for people who were reading oh yeah, journalism yeah. And the, i mean this is not a small name that's true no and, no i, I know so, like, there are some people. And, and no tucker carlson isn't a small name either like no, we, we can we can we can put these things down to oh well internet stuff is just internet stuff but that's not not true exactly uh, i i want i would like to have YouTube, YouTube, the progressive side of YouTube, come out and say uniformly that Antifa is not an organization that anyone should be part of, and that the actions that they promote are illegitimate. Ah, uh, I, I don't know if you're going to get that from the YouTube left. Well, um, that's why shouldn't I get that? Why shouldn't I expect that? Given that this group has not denounced violence, preemptive violence. I, I don't know. I, I well, I, I. I think um, in a perfect world you should. In in a perfect world you should. But these uh, like they are a lot of these kinds of people um, on the left. Um, we've seen a, a very um, a, and, and I'm gonna I'm gonna play devil's advocate and explain their position. We have seen um, in the past couple of years um, a serious rise in um, in sort of uh, far right. Um, uh, sort of radical nationalist politics, uh, not not just like um, mm -hmm. uh, anti-immigration stances, but we're talking about um, we're talking about things like white nationalism. We're talking about um, uh, we're talking about like young um, young uh, like uh, Trump supporters trying to um, trying to like call ice on other uh, other students at their colleges and stuff. Um, and at the same time, we're seeing a lot of violence from um, from not not just from Antifa, because as much as like Antifa has, has started riots and got into fights of protests and stuff like that, um, no one has been killed by an, uh, an anti-fascist protester for a long time. Um, I, I think there's only uh, one in history. I, I know there was uh, a couple of like um, sort of radical anti police activist uh anti police types who've shot some uh, okay but th this is but, more or less a matter of definition we've had yeah. people um, yeah yeah and, and like i said potentially like, connected yeah. to these groups i mean potentially potentially um well but, i don't know i mean, I mean this is the thing right like if you go to like um what was it that malik guy from dallas in 2016 yeah, well, I, I mean, mean, if I it, recall correctly, he criticized Black Lives Matter for not going far enough. Okay, but you know that's what you'll see from right wing people, too, yeah. right? Like oh, no, right, you, right you wing, will, will like the synagogue. Like if you go yeah. to any person who shoots up a place or political reasons, usually what they'll have is you'll have a long history of them criticizing people, uh, the the mainstream, even the mainstream of the radical section of their sides for not going far enough. I mean, this oh, is yeah, no, I I. I entirely agree, but um, I'm still going through and explaining the situation. Is that um, tensions have risen, uh, violence is increasing when it comes to the political sphere, mm. and that's making people scared. Um, it's making people scared, and it's making them feel desperate. Um, okay, yeah, sure, and I think and so. And and so I do think <clears throat> that that is causing people to be somewhat. Um, a, a bit more ends justify the means in their um, in, in their sort of politics and their tactics. 
I'm not saying that uh, toying with the idea of violence or saying, oh, hey, guys, a civil war is coming and that's going to involve wow. violence. You know, so, you know, I, if someone says that once and then kind of walks it back, I think that people, we should forgive that, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I agree. Okay. Well, I mean, and that standard should be the same for the left and the right. So mm -hmm. if, or yeah, someone yeah. On the if, right if they walk it back, like, I'm fine with that. Okay. Well, you know, in, in that case, I guess we're, we're in a situation where we just have to discuss, I mean, if the left is going to work with a standard like this, I guess I would want to see, I would also want to have a larger discussion about doxing and about um, just generally, uh, well, I mean, I guess doxing on one would be a place to start and just generally attempts to get people kicked off from corporate platforms. Uh, this has become a real problem on the right, and I'm not so. This is not going to resolve well for the left, and I don't think the left realizes uh, this. Okay. Um. So okay, it's, we could start with the social media censorship thing. Um. Mm. It's not just the right. Um. And I know this because mm. as much as um as much as yes, there are quite a lot of right wing um types who have been banned from social media and stuff. Um. I could name 10 times as many lefties who have been banned for um, criticizing trans exclusion of radical feminists or um, or making a joke about white people or something like that. And, and as much as um, at the end of the day, I wish Twitter were way less draconian on their policies because for some reason their bots seem to be more interested in, um, in like, uh, banning people for swearing at verified accounts than um, actual harassment campaigns. But what so we're I, talking about isn't yeah. like and, and no, and this. I'm not, I, and I'm not saying like, um, uh, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that uh, I actually don't agree that some. Um, I actually don't agree that some of the uh, right wingers should have been banned either. Um, I, I think a lot. I just think a, a lot of people because it's such a large site. Um, are being banned uh, for reasons that would be um, uh, they're casting quite a wide net um, in these situations yeah, but because they want algorithms. Is, we're, 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 we're really in danger of doing a false equivalent. I'm not talking about like an account here or in there that runs across uh, that runs. I mean, I'm not talking about like Sargon of the Cod. I got banned for for profanity or oh, I think that's how why Sargon of the Cod got banned. I'm not talking about you know uh, I, I hit I hit a buzzword and a bot banned me. Or or something like that. I'm talking about large media organizations like Infowars getting taken down by organized attempts by people like Jared Holt. And then and Jared Holt is not again, like I said, Jared Holt okay. is not like a private individual. He works for an organization called yeah, Right okay. Wing Watch, which okay. is funded by. I mean, it's a corporation he works for. He's a corporate representative, effectively, and and. and so what we're talking about is we're talking about a right-wing corporation with hundreds of employees essentially gets banned off of social media. And, a, and this was not a bot. This was a coordinated attempt. Okay. I just don't okay. see anything um, like that on the left. Well, okay. So we can um, we can talk about um, InfoWars then. Um, so The subject of InfoWars is not the question. The subject is, is there an equivalent of InfoWars that got banned off of the left? Well, uh, no, but um, is there a left-wing equivalent of what Infowars has done? Of conspiracies, actually, yes. What? Well, no, not I'll conspiracies. Call question. Not conspiracies. Now, I, um, now the reason that Jared Holt actually um, wrote the article that ended up getting them um, cascaded off the of social media, um, he actually um, he wrote an article explaining that um, Infowars had actually violated the terms of service on multiple occasions. Um, Alex Jones himself. There are clips out there of his chan uh, of him on his channel, not only um, advocating but also threatening violence. But you said um, earlier I, um, I that, that it's holds up. Um, no, that it's forgivable if, he thre if, if he they threaten violence. I know Alex Jones has said that he does not con uh, he does not condone violence. So an out of context clip that's an assertion of violence falls into the category that we just agreed should not be a reason for getting a person thrown off of media or for any kind of sanction. Well, n no, because it, like are, I are um, you like saying you said, here that Alex Jones actively promotes violence? Um, yes. 
Uh, no, I mean he, he I mean, did. He legitimately threatened to fight people. That's not um, okay. No, that, threatened I, to beat I, people. I, up. I, I'd like to fight somebody. I mean, that's not. That's not that's not a credible threat. Like that's not the same thing as like showing up at someone's house and going like, "We're gonna fight you right now." Saying something like, "I want to fight this person" is not a threat. No, it, no, Jones not has, I want to fight Jones this person. I am going to uh, like I am going to, to hit you. I can go and get the quotes if you want. Let's... I I think I think but the, the the context matters though, David. Yeah, it does. I think it isn't. It, but... If he was, if he had a credible threat, couldn't he have criminal allegations brought against him? Ah, uh, he could. But those. Uh, but here's the the real problem is. I don't say when um, pursuing criminal allegations. Yeah, Couldn't the problem he is he's pursuing criminal damages. allegations. Uh, do you do the you government's really not think... pursuing criminal allegations against Alex Jones because they wouldn't hold up? Oh, um, then um, they're not at the moment. No. Um, uh, but... Come on, David. Come on. The, 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 these things don't hold up in court because they don't meet the actual threat. This element of the terms of service is essentially aligned with a legal principle. If if Alex Jones was, I mean, we're essentially accusing someone of a felony right now, like with 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 really no evidence and with what? What do you mean no evidence? I'm talking about video evidence. We're talking. You you're talk talking about. about you're you talking, talk about, you're the, talking you're, about an out of context clip where he well, wants to fight well, somebody. Well, then you need to you need to explain the context of the clip where he's actually not um, where. That shows he's not breaking the terms of service. You can't just use out of context as some kind of get out of jail free card. Okay, but like, uh, how about this? Like, I we could come up with a clip of contrapoints, like literally talking about how he want, like holding a gun and literally talking about how he wanted to inflict violence uh, against Nazis. Uh, you, she. Uh, okay, well they. I I just use neutral. So okay, uh, whatever. Uh, and and. Uh, well, okay, actually, that's not th that's not fair though, David, because they were a he when this video was released. So, what do you want me to do? I even think that they call themselves he in the very video I'm referring to. Which one are we talking about? <laughs> Whatever. This is the one where but... this is the one where they have a debate with themselves about violence against right wingers. Oh, so you could uh, take I, I do. quotes I, I, from I, I that think... and make it sound okay. like they advocated for violence. But then when you go to their entire career and look at their extended statements, which we agreed 20 minutes ago was the standard, you'll see that in that context, they do not advocate violence. And this was just yeah. a hyper this was just a hyperbole a hyperbole well, it, it was for a... dramatic purposes. Well, it, it wasn't even actually a hyperbole for dramatic purposes. It was specific characters being played um that were saying these things as um as sort of like um as a sort of political sounding board um and using them to present the arguments and then refute them and i um, would argue that that's what alex jones says. i i entirely disagree with that because um he doesn't make it clear no, I. But let's let's just go here. I mean, you could go. I, I could just list off examples of of any of the many YouTubers who support Antifa doing things like this, talking extemporaneously and in a indirect fashion about wanting to like, like El Chapo Trap House, right? They were on Blogging Heads TV, and they said things to the regards that there would be like consequences of possibly hanging conservatives and very specific conservatives. Jesus at that. Christ! Okay, but like what? what <laughs> I, I'm not familiar like, with El Chapo, Chapo, Chapo Trap House. Is are they banned? Right? Like no. I, I I'm not familiar with the context of that. Uh, I'm not familiar with that situation. Um, I don't follow Chapo. Um, but um okay I, but like th this is the complaint is this the complaint is that if somebody says something like in a, in a facetious way in in an extemporaneous way like a sounding board that gets recontextualized on the left to be oh it was a character oh it was just them speaking in the lip uh, in the in the in the moment look at their other statements put it in context alex well, jones does this it gets taken out of context and there is a corporate coordination to take down all of their accounts. Okay, but in the situation um, of the contrapoints video you're talking about, um, it, the character the contrapoints, yeah, no, but the character contrapoints is playing um, is literally dressed up as an anti-fascist, and um, and it's very clear that this is not contra herself. Okay, um, but, in the situation but... in the situation with Alex Jones. There is no, uh, there is no uh, clear um, like distinction between <clears throat> Alex and these alleged characters that he's uh, that you claim that he's playing. Um, when there is no evidence um, that he uh, does this, 
There's no um, there's no claim from from him where he says, yes, a lot of what I say is bullshit. I'm just using it to present some arguments and then refute them. He doesn't do this. No, but the, this is not a this is that, not that is this is a false equivalent. Jones is to is to is to, is to essentially be a character and do this. And I think that this is just a naked double standard. Furthermore, I, I, I think that what we're, we're essentially doing is we're. We're, we're taking what is, is an accusation of of uh, what should be a felony, which is a direct threat. We're 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 doing this sort of like this is the whole thing with uh, we, we did this with Kavanaugh too, right? Like we take something that should be a crime, rape, right? We don't have enough to prove that, and then so we go to we go to something that like is sort of similar to to this, right? Like oh well, you know, there is this improper, uh, and we go like oh well, it's because there's this insinuation with little to no evidence or co corroboration, then we can, then we can essentially use this to remove them from power, uh, and, and this would be fine. Maybe we could even make a case that this is how it should be, but it's not consistently applied. You do not apply the standard to El Chapo Trap House. You do not apply this standard to, and I watched that contrapoints, David, and that was a sympathetic. That position was being sympathetically portrayed, like well, this it, is. It was being sympathetically portrayed, but it was not. It was not being presented in a a sense of agreement. That's it a wasn't being... That's a distinction without a meaning. It is a distinction. With, I mean, I, I think this is this is I think where the concern is. The concern is that there's no expectation that these things are going to be consistently applied. Well, there's no expectation of it ever being consistently applied, but I think the number of times that Alex Jones himself has been okay, um, so has been actively protected, and I think a lot of these, um, like the number of uh, the number of times Jones himself has um, has actually um, said some stuff that's gotten him into legal trouble. I know there is a, an ongoing lawsuit about the Sandy Hook suit shooting. Um, that. Yeah, but is very likely, and I, I just want to point this out, that might be very likely why he really got banned. And the Jared Holt thing is a sort of, um, was, was nothing more than the spark that actually lit the oil. Um, well, someone needs to bring that up to Jared Holt because he brags about getting Alex Jones oh, yeah. podcast. But who wouldn't? Come on. <laughs> I wouldn't. Come on. I, I do not consider taking out my opponents via bans to be something funny, cute, or I consider it to be really shameful to be quite honest well i uh, and, and, and if we're, if we're going to this whole sandy hook thing right like just to give you an equivalent right uh democracy now during the bush administration during the waning years of the bush administration actively entertained conspiracy theories that insinuated that george w bush was behind the 9 11 attacks democracy now with the amy goodman one and, and you know they had people come on and insinuate that much now, and okay. a lot of people who were victims of that attack uh, didn't like this. Democracy Now, there was no grounds to take Democracy Now out of the network. There is no grounds to slash Democracy Now's credit cards to make it impossible for them to accept payment. And, uh, you know, that's where we are. And, and so, yeah, so yeah, we, well, have I think, we have... I, I think there is a difference um, between specific like political figures like um, Bush or Obama, because there's a lot of conspiracy theories about Obama that are similar to that. Um, I think there's there's a very big difference between that and um, then say harassing the parents of um, of school shooting victims. Uh, I think in that situation, those parents are not public figures. Um, and because of the conspiracy theories that Jones himself put out, um, those families were actively stalked and harassed. Um, and if you're going to believe Jones himself, when he says he's playing a character, and just present, uh, and if you're going to say that he's just presenting these things for the sake of argument, then um, he's not. He clearly wasn't doing enough to make sure that um, that his fan base that were believing the things he was saying were. Um, were not go um were actually not going to then act upon those beliefs well, and we, then we, we harass those families. Say that Antifa acted upon perspectives put into the public frame by Matt Iglesias. I mean, once once you do this, his fans harass people because he said something. Then what we were talking about. And he was the one is, who started the conspiracy. Well, no, but like the the idea that the idea that Tucker. I mean, like you're saying that we can hold announcers accountable for things that people who listen to them do 
well, how could that possibly be contained? Like, there's no way to track that. Well, well, there is um, in one in a couple of senses mm. because if you can condemn those um, the actions of those people, um, if you then do take uh, if you then do take steps to prevent that from happening, that's fair enough. Um, if say a fan of mine were to go and do um, were to go and threaten someone, and then someone brought that to my attention, and I said, "Yeah, guys, don't do this." I completely condemn this. That's fair enough. Um, even if they tried to claim that it was completely because of me, but if I um, if I started this conspiracy theory and even after um, stuff started happening, um, like people were being uh, like people were being harassed because of what I said, um, there is a the, there is a, a, a legal um, recourse for that, and which is why that lawsuit is going on right now. I don't think that this is – if you have a legal injunction to bring against Alex Jones, then bring it against him legally. No, they are. That, well, they, no, they in are. this case, they are. They do not have a I – mean, this we, we shifted down to something that m might have a, some kind of civil damages, and we'll see what that plays out. Yeah. But what and you're think, asking me to do, you're reason... asking me, hold on, David, you're asking me to essentially nominate multinational corporations as the arbiters of civil discourse in society. Uh, no, no, they're, they're not. Um, the okay, multinational well, corporations, that's... the multinational corporations are just banning him so that they are not liable for platforming him. You're not liable for platforming. Look, look they, uh, they could be, they, they could no, also they're... be sued. They just want to hide from that. Like, no, I, this they, is they, cynical. Look, the, the, this the is cynical. Multinational corporations. No, it's not. It goes on. It goes on basically as a once. If that were true, there'd be essentially no Antifa accounts on Twitter right now. Well, they don't think that they're going to get um, civil lawsuits from that. When was the last civil lawsuit? About? Like, uh, why shouldn't there Go be? On. Like, well, why no, should tell, tell me where there, there are? There yeah, civil, no, I'm, I'm not law? saying that. I, I'm not saying they shouldn't. I, I'm not saying they shouldn't happen. I'm not. I'm, I'm not talking about whether or not it should or shouldn't. I'm saying is the it reason happening? why there aren't there have, to my knowledge, there have never been civil lawsuits against social media organizations because somebody was planning or described an illegal act on their platforms. And the reason why there isn't, David, the reason why there isn't is that for the last five years, whenever these corporations have been brought into court, they have claimed that they are not actual publications and that they do not actually control the opinions on their platform, but are only publics, they're only reflections of the public space. Now, it seems like they want to have this both ways. It seems like they want to both tell the liability courts that they're not publishers, and they also want to be able to claim that they have a indiscriminate or arbitrary ability to ban anyone from their platforms. Yeah. Um, How can you have this both ways? They they can't, um, in, in all honesty. They're, they're okay. going, they're, they're trying they to, are. but they can't. Um, yeah, they are. Um, well, the situation is, um, at the end of the day, is they have a terms of service, right? So to I know so, they're hiding behind their terms yeah, of service. No, but they what can't. yeah, but what they're doing is they're saying, okay, um, so um, I, I got to go for a, a couple minutes. I'll come back and I'll explain what my position. I think the difficulty we're having, and I'm just going to entertain the chat here. Oh, uh, I should say Charlemagne. Alex Jones is always talking about fighting in absurd metaphors and doesn't actually mean it. Stop playing this ma context game. Uh, well, I think that's to my point, right? That Alex Jones is always talking about fighting in absurd metaphors. I mean, that Charlemagne, perhaps you could clarify, but doesn't this vindicate the position that this that this whole I'm going to fight you, bro thing is is hyperbola for political theater the same way that contrapoints provided Antifa characters for political theater. I mean, the Antifa characters in ContraPoints are not presented as if the the author doesn't endorse them. And so, I, I don't know, it just seems like a sneaky way. And I, I, I guess I'm not so sure about the exact El Chapo Trop House thing. I know they've toyed with political violence a lot. Okay, um, so I am back now. Um, so I wanted to explain uh, my position on the situation of... Um, how they um, how they play about having their both ways on these social media platforms. Um, so I, I'm going to come at this from a legalistic perspective. So it's not necessarily what I think really should happen at the end of the day. It's just how they're doing it. Um, so basically, these sites have a terms of service. So to to not be responsible for everything that happens on there, okay, I understand. Because they Before have to you work with the terms of service, stuff. can you just announce what? what point you're trying to make and then back it up? Um, 
Okay, so the point I'm trying to make is that um, this is uh, I'm trying to explain how they have this um, this both ways of they're not publishers, but they want um, but they want to make sure that they're not responsible for everything that's on their site, but also ban people. Well, the reason that they um, they they have to make sure that things like criminal activity and stuff don't occur on their site as as much as possible, right? If it's criminal activity, we're in an uncontroversial zone. Yes, but that uh, criminal activity is not what. In, first of all, to my knowledge, has any has any social media company been sued? Or been taken to court for damages for criminal activity organized uh, on their site. Not, but, to my not knowledge, that I know of. No, right. But um, but um, and the uh, reason um, why I do know, to... um, I do know that Discord has been um has been subpoenaed for messages um for things like um uh white nationalist groups at Charlottesville. Um, I know they actually recently um changed their terms of service so that. When agreeing to that, um, to, uh, when agreeing to to using Discord, that you now you now are not allowed to sue them for things that happen on there. Um, it's something, it's something like that. Um, and I think that might have something to do with um a lawsuit okay, that I haven't heard they, about or whatever. You know, like uh, that's different, yeah. though, right? Yeah, like, it is. Um, it, it, but if, there is if, a. If I, if I send emails over, you know, I guess like emails encrypted, so maybe that's harder, right? And but but if, if you have public messages that are printed in the public space, you can be subpoenaed by the government. But being subpoenaed in that sense is just the government asking you to provide evidence. It's not them trying to loop you into culpability for the action. Um, no, but the point is, is that these sites, they don't want this to happen. They're, they're playing it from a better safe than sorry situation. I, I, I understand and, that, but what we're talking about is not illegal activity. Yeah, it, it's not necessarily always illegal activity. Sometimes it's civil suits. But the situation, um, and and there are situations where um, where hosting sites have got it into civil suits, um, but most of the time that's to do with copyright, right? Um, and that does occur, and that that occurs all the time. Um, uh, that's the reason that um, YouTube has such a draconian false DMCA system at the um, DMCA system at the moment, and why it's so easy to do a false DMCA is due to the fact that there were massive numbers of lawsuits against YouTube for. Copyright situation. Well, but this is a total um, different. Uh, no, I, I'm. Like, I'm just. I, I'm a huge opponent of intellectual property generally. So we're we're just going on a complete uh, no, side thing here. The the, the question I'm is explaining is, how things are. I'm explaining uh, how things are. If you explain are. all of corporate law around this thing, we'll be here for hours. But that's the situation. We we can but talk. We can talk like, all we like about. We can talk all. Um, we can talk all we like about the um about like. Um, our magical fantasy world about how the um, about how the world should David, work and how political discourse should go. I stopped you when go. you were explaining intellectual property law, which is very interesting, but not what we're talking about. Yeah, but my point like, is, is that these sites they they use the terms of service so that they are not uh, if if they ban people for do, um, for breaking things like uh, for doing things like harassment and hate speech and all of that stuff, they don't get into trouble. Um, they don't get into trouble as long as they hold to that. If they think this person is getting into a civil suit for doing something that would um, that could potentially count as breaking the terms of service, um, then they could be sued for allowing someone who was breaking their terms of service on their site to do this um, to do this stuff. If that caused damages, that could make them liable. The that they have not faced this kind of liability, and uh, what you're saying is well, no, because they banned Alex Jones. Listen, David, listen, David. exactly. No, they wouldn't have faced liability even for Alex Jones. They don't face liability for Antifa, do they? Is Tucker Carlson going to sue Twitter because a mob showed up as his house? Well, I don't think he has the, a standing was the to mob, do that. Was the mob um, organized through Twitter? There, there, well, I'm sure it was organized through Twitter, among many other things. Not only that, we have tweets from whatever the Antifa organization in D.C. was talking about how they were going to show up there. If you're, if that was a publication, Tucker Carlson would be right now forming a lawsuit against them, but they have no liability in this matter. And you agreed that they don't have liability. So why are we still going on this? The terms of service is not a way for these companies to have their cake and eat it too. They either have to own the opinions on their site or they have to claim to be a public platform. One or the other, please. Are you advocating they should have the ability to, 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 to occupy this gray area? Um. I'm not saying that they should. I'm just saying that they will, whether we like it or not. No, they won't if we put in un no uncertain terms that they can't do what they're doing right now, which is acting as police for public opinion. Uh, how? Uh, how? How do we do that? Because has yeah, any oh, of, has any of this protesting? Easy. We, we, has any of this protesting ever stopped 
um, Twitter from being draconian. If anything, all of this complaint, all of these complaints about free speech and censorship have only made things worse. Like things have only gotten worse since then. Look, so I don't see. I don't. I, I'm just cynical about this. I'm sorry. Well, I don't care if you're cynical. I'm cynical. I, th there's probably there's there's no way you're holding progressive opinions and are more black pilled than me. But let, the thing is, this is not a hard problem to fix, David. We just say, tell these corporations that they treat their their terms of service as explicit, non-ambiguous documents. Or we draw them into court for every single liability and legal issue that was facilitated on their platforms. And if we say that to them, I guarantee it the next day they will come up with a crystal clear terms of service guideline that cannot get people banned from Twitter for, ooh, just to pull a hat name out of my, uh, you know, something out of my hat. Uh, Something, something like saying, for instance, that there is a higher proclivity of crime in the black community in Millennial Woes' case. Right, like that is not a violation of the terms of service. It's not, like it, it, it's it, so 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 yeah. the, okay. the so, idea. Yeah, that... no, no, no. You know what? I would entirely agree with that. Um, but at the end of the day, um, if and if someone um, if someone does end up uh, forming some lawsuits against Twitter for that, fair enough. All uh, um, like uh, up to them. I I fully support that because as far as I'm concerned. I'm in agreement that the terms of service need to be much, 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 much clearer. Um, and they, they sort of use it whenever they want it. But I think this is less uh, left-wing and right-wing, and it's more verified versus unverified. I think well, it's, 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 uh, I think it's like motivated. Jared it's, Hull versus the rest of Twitter. It's really not. Um, I mean, because what, like, basically, Jared Hold is of the opinion that people like millennial woes should be kicked off of Twitter, not for violation yeah. of terms of service, but for opinions like the one he expressed. Um, I, is I, that I not true? I'm pretty I, sure. I, I, I don't want to put. I don't want to necessarily put words in Jared's mouth, but I think that uh, he would agree that there are many things that Woes has done that would have violated the terms of service. I don't want to, I don't want to like be too strong on Jared because I'm not Jared Holt. Um, so uh, I, I, if you want to, if you want to argue with him about that, I, I would guess go and tweet at him instead. You, that um, doesn't work. But though. this is not me. You, you understand that this doesn't work as a, as, as a, a strict terms of service. If the terms oh, of I'm not, I'm, I, 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 I know it doesn't. I know it doesn't at this point. Um, but that ambiguous terms of service is the one we have at the moment. I know, and we should be working to destroy it and replace it with a non-ambiguous terms of service. And also, and, and also, and, and backing it up with with threats to essentially, like I said, open the floodgates on lawsuits for these companies if they don't uh, uh, adhere to it. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. I completely agree. Okay, but this seems to be. Uh, it's just we that saying, those kinds of terms, that... th those kinds of lawsuits cost money. That's the problem. Twitter is a massive company oh, with a lot oh. of um, with a lot of money behind it. I don't know if it would work, but well, right, you can right try. Now, right now, I think the ball is in the court of political action, not against legislation. Right now, right now, the uh, the. The, the there isn't there we haven't really dealt with these ambiguous gray companies that want to be publications one moment and uh and and, and public spaces the next like twitter and facebook uh, so and i think we might need legislation to recategorize them as one or the other and then list reasons what they need to do in order to escape corporate liability for opinions expressed on their platform uh okay there's there's another issue here and it's not one that uh, I think is like a moral issue. It's just a um, a practical issue, and that's the fact that um, a lot of these sites are regulated very differently in different countries. How do we deal with that part? Um, if because uh, there's a lot of uh, people arguing that Twitter should become something like a um, a public utility or something. Um, I don't think that's something that could occur because of the fact that. Um, it's not necessarily just a company used in America. It's used, but it's used in the UK. It's used in Australia. It's used pretty much all over the world. I, I don't um, understand how. Like, you're aware that we've got corporate laws regulating multinational oil companies, right? Uh, 
Yeah. Okay. Um, so, I, like, what? I, guess what, I mean, like, 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 a company is multinational, therefore we can't regulate it. I mean, come on, right? Well, it's like, more. Are, it's more. Who's accounts are by? Like, am I the social democrat or are you? <laughs> like, no, really? no. It's, it's more. It's more. Um, like, how do? Um, where do these? Uh, where do these new regulations apply? Do they apply? Um, do do they apply to British accounts? I know. Um, uh, what is it? It's it's Germany. They um. They have extra filters in place to ban um, any accounts that they think are Nazis. Um, so, like, you get a lot of accounts that are restricted in Germany that aren't restricted anywhere else. That's, that's totally ancillary to the point I made. So, if, uh, if Facebook does not abide to the rules of the strict terms of service, then the United States court system will open itself to entertain lawsuits against them for any malfeasance perpetrated on their platform. I, I, I would just, I, I don't think they will. Because the United States, uh, like these people, um, I'm, the, the I'm United States government uh, are in the sure, pockets of these people. David, I'm proposing this law. Like, the thing is, is that if 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 we tell lawyers and if we tell courts that there is a new law in effect that makes these corporations liable for any damages uh, concerning things that were planned and described on their platforms, every law, every tort lawyer in this country is going to pick up a lawsuit and sue. Facebook and Twitter at once because they're going to want to have a piece of that billion dollar pot or trillion dollar plot that is going to essentially end these companies and they will adhere to it at that stage. Companies are afraid of lawsuits. That is a ironclad rule of corporate understanding how to regulate corporations and keep them in line. I'd love to see it happen. I just, I mean, uh, is, I'm, I'm just a little, I'm just a little pessimistic about it actually no, happening. Like, that's all. We, we've had, we've dealt with this problem. Like let's take for instance, corporate safety in factories, right? I used to work in a factory and they were paranoid about safety because they knew that the second anything was done at the management level to indicate that they didn't care about safety as priority number one, they could have a million or billion dollar lawsuit on their hand. If it was well, a billion is a little bit high, they could have a, a hundred million dollar lawsuit, class action lawsuit on their hands that could effectively capsize the country the company. And, and once that incentive system is in place, corporations do react. Historically, we have evidence for it. I mean, we're just going to throw our hands up and say, oh, corporations no, no, get I, to do I, what they want until the communist revolution. I mean, you can, you're fair oh, to no. do that, but I mean, you know, it's, it's not effective. No, it's, it's not that they can do whatever they want. It's just that I don't think that I, I'm, I'm just concerned that um, these kinds of uh, lawsuits are not actually going to, um, uh, are either not going to go through very well. Um, and when the first failure occurs that this is just, um, that it's just going to not happen for another few years and it's it's going to take way too long. I actually think the legislation isn't really going to be something that will occur until a more internet savvy generation gets into um gets into sort of the annals of uh, the halls of power. I don't well, think this is really going to get get anywhere until millennials are basically running the government and they know I mean, how the internet works. This is now we're getting into the weeds of prescriptive and like prescriptive and predictive things that are that are happening. And that's not really the thing, but but well, since yeah, but this is yeah, I, I I already said I agree with you. So okay, I well, we were but, just having but, a further discussion. Sure, and sure and 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 I'm going to point out here though that by agreeing with me, you are essentially saying that many of the complaints that right-wingers have had, including people on the alt-right even though I don't consider myself I, I'm well, I don't consider I'm not on that in inside that movement that their complaints are essentially vindicated. Uh, yeah, by, actually, by I, I will here. say, um, I will say, due to the um, due to the ambiguous nature of a lot of um, of Twitter's rules, I will say, yeah, a lot of them would have just as much of a claim as any um, as any leftist who was um, banned for a joke. I mean, I, I've been banned on Twitter for um, for a bloody joke, so I, I know I, I know where people are coming from here. Okay. It's just. The problem, um, there's, there's, um, the other uh, one of the other issues I, I could see is um, damages as well. Is how much damages someone could actually really call for? Um, uh, well, well, maybe I they could go for something like a punitive life. lawsuit. Yeah, um, but uh, I mean, let's predicting just... what a lawsuit will, uh, how much damages a lawsuit will award after we pass a hypothetical law that's not passed yet is not something. Yeah, that it's it's anybody be can entertain it. That's not the topic. What I wanted to go on to was. Then you know, dealing with understanding what's an ethical way to to talk about extremism. So both the right and the left have now sections in them that are wanting revolution of our current system. Yeah. Okay. Are there any ethical restrictions on this? Also, both left and the right 
have uh, have factions that uh, have uh, have histories of of mass genocide. So another complaint from the right wing is that um, apologizing for democides in the past or denying them is not taken seriously on the left, but it's taken incredibly serious up to and including jail time for people who do it on the right. Moreover, people claim that uh, uh, people can wink at revolutionary violence on the left and, and entertain it. If you can say we're going to violently seize the means of production, you're probably not going to get banned from anything. But the converse really isn't true for revolutionary groups on the right. Do you think that this is a double standard? Um, I think that this is a standard that um, is more of a... Um, uh, like we talked about political violence earlier, and basically the fact that um, at the end of the day, um, left-wing violence, although more numerous is nowhere near as severe when right-wing violence happens. Um, that just depends on... That's not historically true, you understand. If that is true... No, not historically, but it's true right now. I'm not talking about 50 years ago. I'm not talking about 100 years ago. I'm not talking about in some um, bloody uh, far-off um, like South American country. I'm talking about well, right no, here, right but, now. But it, that, 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 Why does this even enter into it? Like, So you're saying that because... You're saying that because Antifa's victims happened to not die, and and uh, the 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 victim at Charlottesville happened to die, that means that one type of violence is way worse than the other. It wasn't uh, just want, it wasn't just happening, happening not to die. It, it, it wasn't a case of like like uh like they did equivalent actions and then one of them didn't die. We're talking about a situation where one guy tried to actually drive a car into a group of protesters and successfully killed someone. Um, oh, but there, there, and, there and have been like there have been antifa protests. attacks that could have killed people. I've seen videos of people conking people on the head with large objects. You can easily kill someone that way. Yeah. Okay. Like, no. Like, um, but then there's, there's like, a okay, well, that. he got yeah, hit in the yeah, head with I'm a, saying, a piece of metal I'm, and he didn't die. I mean, like, no, I'm not. I'm not saying that that's a, that's not a um, that that's not a bad thing. I'm just suggesting that there are equivalents to that on the right as well. Like th those fights okay, but, at Charlottesville were just what are you uh, were, actually were things on both sides. I'm saying that. For everything, for every equivalent, the um, the anti-fascist groups where they get into fights and they beat people over the head with shit, um, there are equivalents to that on the right. There is no equivalent to um, to the mass shooting at Pittsburgh that just happened a couple of weeks ago, um, where eleven Jews were killed and six more were injured, including yeah, four the police Dallas officers. Shooting, wasn't there? Um, yeah, but that was like okay. Two, well, okay. So that was two I'm years sure, ago. I'm sure, I'm sure there's then the number of different every time, right? Like no, sh no two shootings are ever the same, and you'll always be able to pick a little difference out. But there are people who are sympathetic to the left that are deadly that use firearms, and ultimately, I'm asking you: should there be two sets of rules, or should there be one? There should be one set of rules. Okay, but I just don't. Uh, I'm just of the uh, of the belief that those rules. Will hurt, um, will hurt far right extremists more often than they will, um, than they will be applied to left wing extremists because I just think that the far right extremist problem is okay. more severe. Is that I'm not saying anybody, today? anyone who commits violence, you don't have to agree with that. Um, yeah, okay, no, that's, I don't that's agree fine with that because I'll give you one um, example. So, one of the most common ways for legally sanctioning somebody or sanctioning someone in the public square uh, on the right, and you know, I'm I, I, the Holocaust definitely happened, but a very common way of getting people sanctioned, especially in Europe, is to go to people who say like, well, less than 6 million people died or something like that. Mm. But questioning the mass democides of both communist and Turkish rulers over the 20th century is something that is almost de rigueur in leftist circles and no one suffers any consequences for that. I, I would disagree that they're uh, they're popular in leftist circles. In my experience with um, with sort of left Twitter, it's um, it's pretty uh, accepted that yeah, you don't deny genocides, and it's sort of like smaller um, does Cenk uh, dodgy know, does groups. Does Cenk Uyghur know that? Um, Cenk Uyghur, uh, as far as I know, has walked back his beliefs on the the Armenian genocide, and he now doesn't deny it. But he's not. Um, he's not in jail. He still has his program. No. Uh, yeah, that's true. Um, but, this would not occur if he denied the Holocaust. Yeah, but then you got to you got to admit that there's different contexts to those two situations. Right? No, I don't understand. Are, 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 okay. are some lives more than others? 
No, it's I mean, not. It's, that. Ridiculous. it's the fact and that no, it's the fact that one um one of those is a genocide that occurred in a Middle Eastern in a Middle Eastern country um that really didn't have much of um that didn't like take over Europe and start a uh, and start a world war. Okay, are you fucking um, kidding me? It took place in Turkey. You're aware that Turkey took over Europe, right? Huge uh, how long ago? About like three, like basically when the like basically three hundred years ago. Three hundred years ago. Okay, that's the problem. But one that's the problem right here. There are are people alive, like like, who lived under the Nazis. What? No, I. But like, what are you talking about? Like, there are people who, there, there are. Okay, hold on. So the first excuse is that it happened in the Middle East, so it doesn't count. The second thing is it didn't take over Europe or the parts of the Europe that it took over or were currently in possession of when this massacre occurred were were uh were were not the real parts of Europe because well, Turkey did the have places parts that, of Greece they're not the way places up until that, World War One. They're not the places where you find Holocaust denial is illegal. I'm not I'm well, not agreeing that Holocaust not, denial should be illegal. Only, not only in the place where the Armenian genocide actually happened, not only is denial of it not illegal, actually saying it happened is illegal. There are oh, yeah. people currently but, in jail for saying that it happened. Yeah, okay. That's are we talking about active. we're talking about Turkey, right? Yeah, no shit. Yeah, more exactly. more I, than that. Turkey's a dictatorship, bruh. Turkey's a fucking dictatorship. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't agree. Not as bad because the kinds of people who did that genocide are still no, in I, power I, where it happened. No, the exact I'm saying opposite. That, no, I no, I'm not saying that. I'm I'm actually suggesting that um, for the con- um, for European countries, um, including Amer- um, I'm going to include Europe, um, America in the West, shall we say, um, what we call the West. Um, these are countries that. Um, that wanted to make sure that um, fascism did not rise, um, did not rise in Europe again. We had this, um, we had this situation. How like, is this uh, relevant? Because it's, uh, I'm talking about the differences between um, how left wing revolutions occur and how right wing revolutions occur. Basically, I don't believe that liberal democracies deteriorate into communism; they deteriorate into fascism. They, well, they, what they, are you talking about? There, I mean, there are there are liberal democracies. That I mean, is, is Venezuela communism? I mean, that's it's, well, it's, that's not true. Wealthy liberal democracies, like when when was the last like Western country that um, that like deteriorated into communism? Well, I mean, like the the use of Western is kind of like well, doing a lot of work for you here. Well, yeah, because those well, are the countries you tend to have. Because, I mean, this, you're, so you are trying to essentially uh, like justify a double standard here. I'm not justifying a double standard. I'm explaining a double standard. <laughs> I, I don't agree with it. I'm just trying Wait, to. I'm just trying to show you the position it, why that the they hell take. Are we talking about it? Because, because clearly, you just don't have a uh, you don't have a nuanced take on this. If you're going to argue against it, then you have to understand. Then you have to have the understanding of why this uh, of why these um, double standards occur in the first place. You don't it's seem to histori- understand that historically. Look, we we have not seen any modern countries like I mean, look, you're saying like okay, Germany maybe, but like even then, that's that's questionable. If we're if we're saying something, if we're saying that a, a society like Germany doesn't descend into communism, it almost did in the 30s. Moreover, like Venezuela, which is a country that was more advanced than 1930s Germany, apparently they apparently went into left-wing totalitarianism. And the the very double standard I brought up, Turkey, <laughs> has, has has seemingly been taken over by a group of people who who's currently uh, enforcing the denial of the very Holocaust that we don't seem to have any interest in enforcing anywhere in the Western countries. The the only yeah, the only justification I'm getting from you is that somehow like if it doesn't take place if it's not I mean I mean uh, I'm, ostensibly I'm the justification to, is that if it's not European it doesn't count but what I'm hearing actually is if it's I'm not I'm saying it's, it's not, not necessarily right, really relevant to their politics it's not I, relevant to the uh, to the political like um, to the political context of the countries where Holocaust denial was illegal um, in in most of these sort of liberal Western le- um, like uh, uh, it, like uh, sort of the like democratic countries such as the UK, the US, etc. Um, in, in the US, it's not illegal anyway. But in say the UK or Germany, and, and Germany's got a, a very guilty history. I don't like that either. I think um, Germany does I, not have a very guilty history. It has the same history as everyone else does. Well, 
Look, uh, you know what I mean. They are guilty about their history. Don't. They have been guilty about their history because they've been made to be guilty about their history. I don't see why Germans should should feel guilty about the Holocaust any more than Russians should feel guilty about the Stalin demicides. I agree. Or China should feel about. Oh, you agree? Okay. Well, I I, I do. I do agree. Um, No, like a a living German that didn't participate in that shouldn't have. um, Shouldn't have any. uh, Shouldn't feel any responsibility for what happened. But at the end of the day. That is uh, that is the sort of um, that's the culture living. that exists. That's the culture that exists there, right? Okay, and but that's but why and that's why just, they are they are afraid of that happening again. They, you're they, just they saying really... that like things are the way they are, so as unfair as things are, like that that's you're, you're basically this is basically just an appeal to the status quo, right? No. The same the same way the corporate thing was, right? Like I'm explaining the situation. Do you think the status quo should exist? No. Do, do you do you think the double standard should exist? You you. Recognize the double standard, obviously. You recognize the double standard. Do you think it should exist? No. So I don't need to you to explain to me the fact that powerful people consider the you know a Jew killed in the Holocaust to be much worse than a Ukrainian killed by Stalin. Like I, I understand that powerful people hold that opinion. What I'm saying is that if you're going to come up with a rule for well, it's more that governing it online to, dialogue, it, it, it matters more to, to the extremists in their country. It matters well, more to even, the extremists even that's in their country. Not true. You'll you'll have you'll have um I mean you'll have you'll have countries that you'll have countries. I think France has anti-Holocaust and England has anti-Holocaust denying laws, and you'll, you'll literally have Turks in those countries voting in Turkish elections for Erdogan. Who is mo- way closer to to the people who killed the Armenians politically and ethnically than any yep. political party that has relevance inside these other countries? It's it's ridiculous. They're, so I, I you know these digressions yeah. aside, they're vote yeah they're voting for Erdogan, but they um but at the end of the day, they're not trying to change the politics of that country. Um, unfortunately. In in this situation, countries will protect their um their own um their own laws and their own people and their own um and their own uh sort of land more than they'll protect other lands. It's it's just something that happens. We've got to work within the system here. This is this is not this no like we have to be able to call the system's hypocrisy out. We either want to call this hypocrisy out or we want to perpetuate it. I see no reason to perpetuate this hypocrisy. It's very easy on the left to be like, oh, well, yeah, guess what? Just tough breaks. I mean, you can literally, there isn't a single mass democide done by leftist totalitarian that has even, like, I could openly talk about how I didn't think Stalin did, uh, Stalin didn't do nothing wrong in public and keep my job and not get banned off of social media. I, I, I would not entirely agree with that. There's been a lot of uh, left wing professors who have been ba- um, who have been kicked out of uh, universities. Um, via sort of like conservative action and like right wing outrage and stuff. I know, I know, I know that stuff. I I know. I think I I know. I know professors who have their jobs that deny this stuff. There's a reason. Oh yeah, that's true. They do. There are there are certain ones who do. Um, But at the end of the day, um, the problem the problem is is that um, is that uh, leftists are not. At the end, um, are not start uh, trying to start revolutions, uh, or well, or they're much, they're much are you worse. Kidding me? The leftists are not trying. To, like literally, half of the YouTube channels constantly talk about revolution, and they cut. Yeah, they're not doing the anything. They're not well, they're actually doing, the doing anything. Right, they're not doing the exact same thing that right wingers are doing. Yeah. That, yeah. What, 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 what is what is what is the right doing that the left isn't when it talks about revolutionary rhetoric? Actually, like organizing in real life, there are uh, there are actual like mass shootings and shit. There are mass shootings. Well, look, look, David. We already went over this. The left has shootings too. Now you could argue that, like, maybe in this one year, if you manipulate one. the time frame, yeah, one in the last like look, uh, look in look, how many years? No, look, David. Like, this is just a misunderstanding of statistics. Shootings are rare. If we manipulate the time in which they're taken, you can make it look like there's a bigger difference or not. Like, so you're admitting, so we, we again, we've moved the goalposts or very predictably. So you admit that there isn't anything that right wing groups are doing that the left isn't. 
like in the actual groups. They're both organizing revolutionary organizations, aka Antifa. They're both talking about revolution in implicit hyperbolic terms. And they both have nuts that that may take it too far. Who knows? Right. And that's something well, that you have to may. contend with. Not may. There are no, there are far both right left and right doing violence has a yes. Yeah, but I'm saying I'm saying that in the current um in the current situation it, uh, right now this is not relevant, David. Do you not understand yes, why it's is. not relevant? Yes, no, it like, is. Calm, calm down and listen to me. Right like, now, you, it's you relevant. Getting, think about what you're arguing. Are you arguing for a double standard? I'm not arguing for a double standard. Okay, I'm great. arguing. So I'm arguing for a consistent. I'm arguing for a doing. consistent standard that's going to apply to a certain group more than another. So we should we should essentially now ban every tanking off of Twitter for the purpose of Holocaust denial, the same way we would ban people look, who supported if, like, look, if, if, ev know, if every single, ta if every single tanky was, uh, um, every single tanky who denied the Holodomor or some shit was banned off the Twitter tomorrow. Some shit? Um, at the end of the day, um, at the end of the day, um, I probably wouldn't be spending my time complaining that much. If okay, well, every single, I, I if every single alt writer was also banned for Holocaust denial, but they're not. Both is both the wrong Ho Holocaust it's Holocaust denial will get you immediately will get you immediately banned and I mean that is complete look, bullshit. I've seen I've seen plenty of alt writers. I engage with them all the time. They do not get banned. They yeah, do you, not always get banned. Can, it's illegal in a lot of countries, David, and it will get you immediately fired from any mainstream job. I've seen people in corporate jobs tell me that the whole the war never happened. I've seen people in major corporate jobs tell me that the, that the Armenian genocide never happened. This is this is something that is something. That I I mean, what we're you're saying that okay, well, the the thing is is that this is all hypothetical. You're saying that well, it will happen. You're saying that that the Holocaust denial happens more on the right than denial of leftist genocides happens on yeah. the left. That's untrue. Way more, yeah. No, it's that's totally. Well, untrue. on the far on the far right compared to the far left, I I do. I can find agree people who apologize for communism right now. I can find people who like major YouTubers that wear their stupid fucking paraphernalia. That's something that you only find on the most extreme elements of the right. Well, yeah, because the right are more uh, are more obsessed with optics, but it doesn't mean that they're not um uh, they're run not running um like they can. Paraphernalia is, is nothing. We're, in, we're in this in the pattern. We're in this pattern, David, where you admit that I have a point, and then we shift to a different point that's sort of totally unrelated. Well, no, right? it's it's when I I point out one of the um one of the irrelevant points that you're making, and then show why um why uh, as much as you're implying it means something, it doesn't. Right now, we do not have a consistent standard to how we deal with denials of mass genocides in the 20th century. We just don't. Chen Uyghur has a job. People people aren't in jail for denying communist uh, communist genocides, uh, and you know, uh, it, with perhaps like a few right wing action examples notwithstanding, there are plenty of people in in the academy who deny that these deny that these mass genocides occurred and and still hold positions of teaching. So we just we just have this double standard. Now you're saying that that, that somehow. Uh, it, it's, it's sort of funny because you're saying that like we need to get a consistent standard, which means either that a lot more people on the left need to be jailed for this. I'm not, uh, I'm not saying anyone should be jailed. Or, for this. or, but at the end of the yeah, day, so, like, so we, what the, can we do about that? What What do you want to do about that? Do you want to uh, Do you want to vote in some like? Uh, do you want to vote in some extremist like borderline neo Nazi party that's gonna um, that's gonna make Holocaust denial legal? I don't think you need to have a. I don't think you need to have a neo-Nazi to support free speech. No, do you? I, I don't. Um, I don't. Okay, think so you understand do, how free speech at the end, can be at, at the moment? Because by... yeah, and I don't think that they would support free <laughs> Come speech. On, man. They make Holocaust denial legal, but at the end of the day, they make a, a lot of. Other no, shit. that's not the question I asked you, David. The question I asked you was, do you think that you need to have a neo-Nazi party in order to get a blanket freedom of speech? Like we don't jail people for nonviolent speech. I, I don't think we will get a blanket freedom of speech. That's not what I asked you. So yeah, I, I'm. I'm saying. Uh, I, I'm saying the, You're just not uh, even your answering the question. No, you, you asked me. Uh, you asked me. Do we need X to have freedoms? Um, to have a thing that I don't believe we can get. You hypothetically, you don't need. Um, hypothetically, you don't need a neo-Nazi to support like a, a freedom of speech. I don't think that a neo-Nazi would support freedom of speech. But I don't think we're going to get. You're the one um, who either neo-Nazis. I, I, I'm no. saying. I, yeah, I'm saying in that on that fight, I don't think it's a hill that's worth dying on. 
at the end of the day. Well, that's not what I asked you. I'm like, of course, that's, you're on the left. Of course, making, uh, you know, ensuring that free speech protections are consistently applied for people on the right isn't the hill for you to die on. But I'm asking for a recognition that it, it, all we're asking for is justice. Well, I've already agreed with you multiple times, and I've just and I've just said, look, okay. So I'm getting the sense that you, I'm getting the sense in all accounts, you do agree with me. You do agree that the left needs to work to get Antifa to renounce violence. You do agree that people like Millennial Woes getting banned for opinions on Twitter that are obviously not outside the terms of service is wrong and corporate abuse. You do think the corporation should be held accountable for essentially masquerading as public spaces when they're really publishing, that when they're really applying their own opinions to things. And you do agree that we need to have a more consistent application of rules, both social, corporate, and governmental, when it comes to winking at violence, talking about revolution, and denying mass democides in the 20th century. All four points we agree on. Okay. So yeah, what I'm like, asking I, I, for is organized collective action to address those points. Uh, I mean, as much as I'd like, uh, as much as I'd like organized collective action, I can only do so much from my position. I'm not asking you. I'm asking for the left to come and and work with us. Okay. <laughs> why do? You, why is that? Why? Okay, you're you're laughing. But if these I, are so, I, yeah, because I uh, yeah, because I'm listen. a cynic. David, listen. I'm a cynic. I I, David, I don't listen. I don't believe this shit's gonna happen. Listen. If these are so, you, you've been sort of, when I brought up these points in their basic form, not notwithstanding like digressions about specifics over you know, who did the worstest thing the most recently, uh, when, when I brought up these things, you've reacted to them like they're so obvious that no one would possibly disagree with them. So if they're so obvious and so common sense reform that no one would disagree with them, why couldn't the left and the right work together to get these reforms made? Prioritization. Uh, okay. At the at the end of the day, I just don't. Uh, as much as I think a lot of people on the left would agree with um with a lot of those causes, um they wouldn't necessarily want to go about them in the same way. They wouldn't want to necessarily um they and they wouldn't necessarily want to put the same amount of effort into them that the right does. But it seems like we're saying that free speech issues aren't a priority as long as we're not the ones suffering from them. No, free speech issues are um, are not a priority to, um, for people who just legitimately care are, are focusing on other issues. That's that's all. Like people can be censored all the time. Um, like, I'm talking uh, like about I said, like there are activists who are making this a thousand times worse, like Jared Holt. I I don't think he is. Uh, I, I... <laughs> I mean, come on, man. Right? Like, he, he, he's going around pressuring companies into making the very abuses we were complaining about 20 minutes ago. I think if the, uh, if the terms of service were more crystal clear that um, what Alex Jones did would probably still break them. Uh, no, it wouldn't. If they made them more specific, I I, I legitimately do believe that. Um, we're just going to have to agree to disagree, or we're going to argue about that for hours. Okay. Well, we're we're coming down the next last ten minutes here. Like the the thing is, is that I mean, I have to read a super chat here. I, I let I let it go a little bit. Um, give me a second. Okay. Um, okay. Oh, sorry, they changed the location. There's a new dashboard. Some I should change back to the classic one. Um, okay. Um, okay. So uh, Charlemagne for another five dollars. Uh, oh, I, I missed one of them. So for first one is show us the left's Alex Jones. The scale of censorship on the right is an order of magnitude higher. You can't even compare them. And it, he says again, uh, Charlemagne, to clarify, the idea that the context around Alex Jones is unclear is absurd. It's a rhetorical game and not honest. We have like 20 years of context, and I certainly agree with that. Any amount of context will show Alex Jones's uh, info wars to be actually quite similar to what ContraPoints does. It's, it's a political theater <laughs> where serious points are made with ridiculous caricatures and hyper hyperbole. Right. Um, you know, th this is this is the game that we're currently in. We have we're mixing political theater with politics itself. And so the idea is, is that I think the left is better at this. They're they're left at they're, they're better at dodging away. 
but um, but this is something that is absolutely uh, an, an issue. From if you look at the context, you'll see it's quite obvious. Do you have something to say, David? Um, oh no, I, I, I'm I'm just loving the false equivalency between contrapoints and Alex Jones. I, I, it's amusing. I'm sorry. No, I mean you can you can laugh all you want. I don't really care. I mean it, the 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 false equivalency that that's what this is, right? It's like a moralistic argument that that left wing malfeasance isn't actual malfeasance. I understand that. That's what, I mean, and it would be one thing. The problem I have, David, is that this is an implicit argument. If we are actually confronted with these things, they don't stand up. Like I said, you agree with all four of my points. When they're brought up in in the abstract, the only thing we have left is that you think that uh, the, the right wing is doing something that's more malfeasant. But what's so funny is that in all of the instances we brought up, uh, the the um, we we could come up with left wing equivalents. So reactionary coalition for five dollars said, "I'm not a Nazi. I just want to burn heretics like the Inquisition." Okay, well, <laughs> whatever. Um, uh, five dollars for Julian Peacock. Once more for the people in the back. Cynicism is not a defense, but an admission to being part of the problem. Were we less cynical, we could try it. I I agree with this. The super. I don't exactly know about the burning heretics thing. Uh, that obviously was a joke. Um, but this one is something I feel that if, if you're always, if you're always outraged when an injustice is done against you and then you're cynical when you benefit from an injustice, that's not cynicism. That's hypocrisy. Oh, I, I am cynical when injustices occur against me too. Um, really? at, at this point, look, I, I'm, I've been, in, I've been through a lot of fucking shit, man. I, I can, <laughs> I can tell you. I laugh. And you're at like, the, that's um, just the way things are. Pretty I mean, much, yeah. Well, no, we weren't. We weren't that's just the way things are with Alex Jones. We were no, like, we I, have to take this guy off the air, right? Well, I, I wasn't doing anything about Alex Jones. I just said I, I just had my piece on. Okay, but on now, what now we're backing. Okay, come on. The thing is, is like we're talking about the proposition of taking Alex Jones, uh, an organized proposition to take him off social media. Yeah, look. At the end of the day, you can um, like you can you can constantly dodge between okay, what Jared Holt and um, and like the organized left is doing, and like my actual personal positions and my personal look, reaction. I, to stuff. I, I don't know how many times I'm going to clarify this, David. I, I'm not here to talk about you. I'm here to talk about the organized left. Now, if you want to denounce them, then well, by all means, let's denounce them together, right? Let's yeah, denounce I, I the have, organized uh, yeah, left. Yeah, I have I have my criticisms of the organized left. I. And that's the reason I, I take a different I, I take a different direction to them, but at the end of the day, that's all I can do. I mean, okay, look, how many times do I have to tell you that I'm not talking about you? I'm talking about the left generally. What I'm saying is that the left. Then why did you have me on and not the organized left? I'm asking. <laughs> I'm, I'm asking. You do think that? Well, because the organized left isn't the person. You do. You identified as left, and you do think that the left needs to clean house. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so so should we start calling into question people like Jared Holt? Jared, no, I think Jared. Um, okay, this is like now, said, now we're now we're like getting I to said. the bottom of it, right? And this is this is what I'm talking about, right? Now we see, indeed, you do not think that this is an actual problem. I don't think Jared Holt himself. Uh, I I don't think Jared Holt is part of the problem. Uh, well, I thought you just said that you you did think he was part of the problem no i didn't i said that Jer i said that um <sighs> in the alex jones situation i agreed with jared hole i'm uh, but it, um when we're talking about like the tankies and the political violence against like tucker carlson or whatever like any of that stuff like i disagree with that we're, we're uh, should, but, should uh, and i will people, also agree should, should and you, i will also agree that should you go around and do this is this action good is taking extreme tweets from right-wing groups or from left-wing groups mailing them into the corporate headquarters with the insinuation that if they're on your platform you will associate those opinions with the corporate body is that an ethical action um it really depends on whether or not they're actually within the terms of service Oh, oh, well, look, if, if there okay, is someone, well, then, okay, the if, someone sends threats to you on, if someone sends threats to you on Twitter, um, uh, I'm going to give you this example. 
If this someone sends not, threats to you on Twitter, the example that I'm going for, I don't, threats are illegal and can't be sanctioned and are against the terms of service. What I'm talking about is the kind of tweets that got millennial woes banned, controversial opinions that are descriptive claims about the universe. Those um, are the ones that are being forwarded to the corporation going like, hey, guys, this is associated with you. Don't you want to ban them? Is that an ethical action? If for, and I, and if someone did that to Millennial Woes' tweet, which given that they banned him for this, that someone probably did this, right? Is that ethical to do that? Is it ethical to take that? At the end of the day, it? I don't think I don't think Woes should have been banned for that tweet. But uh, there are other things okay, that... Is um, it ethical for somebody to take tweets like that, mail them to the corporation, and then ask for rest ask for um, imply i don't think people did that held the tone. it's not ethical. i don't think people did that i think they just reported him i think they just uh, i just well, think they what? clicked the report button on his tweet okay i mean that's well and, and but you know to, to move on to jared holt that's what he is essentially doing he's he's taking tweets that do not violate the strict terms of service and trying to get people well i uh, well this is again well, we, we're going to have to get back into arguments about terms of service, and that's uh, I think that would take too long. Okay, um, one last thing before I have to let you go. Are we in agreement, and this is something that continuously comes up with the left, that by interviewing somebody and by meeting with them online, you do not absorb their opinions, and you're not culpable for, for platforming them? Not necessarily. It really depends on how you approach that platforming. Is that fair? No. <laughs> um, it, it, no, in, in the sense that if you, um, uh, as far as I'm concerned, if you provide some level of pushback or you don't, um, or you just don't agree or just, um, I, I think in, in the situation where um, you are not providing pushback to what they're saying, you are just giving that person a megaphone. Um, Okay, which but, is endorsement. But, but if you are providing pushback or you uh, you do denounce and disagree with them and uh, and you are having a debate or something like that, um, that's completely fair game. I'm sorry, David, but I've seen your I've seen your conversation with uh, Exzy, the the guy who goes by Moo. Exzy, yeah. Exzy. Um, and I did provide some ser uh, I did provide as be uh, as as good a pushback oh, as I could. Your your pushback against him is is orders of magnitude less than roaming millennials push back against Spencer. I would highly disagree with that one. Ugh. Well, I mean, watch it then and watch roaming millennials and not just clips of them. The idea I did watch the entire thing. Okay. Well, I mean, I think that this is in, 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 it, it, this is just a pure example of, 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 uh, I mean, and who gets to be the, who gets to be the arbiter of this, right? You know, it's the public. This is this is sort of something that is unfortunately in the court of public opinion. I don't know really what we're gonna um what we're gonna start arguing about. Well, th like when we start saying okay, who's the arbiter of what's going to happen in politics? Well, uh, preferably it would be the people who vote. Well, what uh, I'm talking about is, I mean, if there's ever going to be a conversation between the left and the right. We're going to have to dump this ridiculous notion that by interviewing somebody, even interviewing them in a friendly capacity, you are absorbing their opinions. Because you're not necessarily it, 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 absorbing their opinions, but you're presenting those opinions unchallenged to a group of people. Um, and when you're talking about a um, a place like YouTube, or um, where a lot of the marketing is actually a marketing of trust um, in that um, in that public figure. Um, to present things that are interest uh, that are either um, interesting or, or in some cases just completely accurate. That's go. Um, that does have. Um, there, there is a responsibility there to make sure that um, you do um, show that okay, you don't endorse or you completely disagree with something, or or actually do try to present some kind of um, some kind of argument against it. There's a. Um, as uh, so, disavowing so, is is like the bare of minimum. Communist is unethical. I don't think I did a neutral portrayal. Does, um, no, but of, like of whether you did or not, a neutral portrayal yeah. of communism is unethical. Yeah, I, I would actually agree with that. Yeah. I mean, this. I'm not a communist. I'm not saying you are, 
but do you understand that this we've essentially described 70 percent of leftist youtube as unethical i don't agree with 70 percent of leftist youtube when we when we're talking about communism um but okay, even man, then, I don't think I don't think seventy percent of leftist YouTube is communist. Jesus Christ! I think no, like, I think most of them I are think basic percent, social Democrats. I think I think seventy percent of leftist YouTube has had at least one video where they present where they present full communism in a sympathetic light without pushback, and I'll I'll take that to the bank. I mean, yeah. ContraPoint certainly does, uh, and Philosophy Tube, if they're not a communist, certainly themselves certainly does. And and you know we can go on and on down the line. This is just a fact. Uh, yeah. Again, um, uh, we, like this is this is something that would require us, uh, a, a more in depth discussion um, rather than just a sort of sideline at the end of it. Um, okay. Of anyway, hangout. well, I have to go now. So thank you for for doing the hangout. I yeah, think okay. we came to the uh, understanding that expression aside, we basically agree with everything. We, we're in total agreement about all of the abuses that the right wing complains about. We're just disagreeing over the priority they have. I, I'm, I'm not okay, just disagreeing so, about the priority, but I also think that these abuses do also occur to left wing people. And it's it's less um, politically biased and it's more um, it, it's it's more of a case of um, uh of PR purposes. Well, if they happen anyway. to left wingers and you care about those left wingers, it sounds like you should make these abuses more of a priority then. So, Anime Pro One Four Eight says, "Holt is the organized left. He works for a think tank funded by billionaires. He is a component of the broader problems distributed to talk about. Billion, yeah. As usual, uh, Sharat's detached from reality. I would say that, yeah, I mean, Holt is the employee of a corporate body that is funded by the leftist apparatus." He is part of the organized left. I think we can hold people accountable for that. And I'm not saying that those are necessarily uh, your opinions, David. I'm just saying, like, it is yeah, a problem. Yeah. And if you want these things confronted, if you're worried about leftists getting banned, then join. Then, then the left needs to make this social media abuse more of a priority for them. Send oh, them oh, oh, five dollars. Yes. Oh, I, 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 ha I have. I've been, I, I've been trying to like ring the alarm bells guys we need um we need to start arguing for like the bloody um terms of service to be more clear and that, perhaps maybe yeah. solidarity with right wingers that get banned too since you know how it feels that would also yeah be I, I i i i i would like that to happen but i'm not sure it will until the sort of um current um sort of polarized zeitgeist uh, calms down but that's going to take I'll, a few I'll years i'll say this if you care about an issue you'll become more outraged and less cynical you can always tell how much people care about an issue depending on their outrage versus cynicism, unless you think the problem just can't be solved. In that case, I think you're welcome to be cynical. Okay, son of Tiamat for $5, and I really need to start getting going. Beyond making milk toast observations, David does not have a point. He's just filling dead air and pretending Medicare didn't. I don't know about Medicare. Uh, thank you nice. for the super chat. Uh, did you have an interaction with Medicare? I really don't. Uh, it, it's drama. pointless drama. It's pointless, unsubstantive drama. Don't worry about it. Okay, well, um, I think those are the last of the super chat guys. Uh, thank you for showing up. I was actually surprised about how much agreement we had, but I have to run right now. Have a good day. Thanks. Bye.